It is 3 p.m. on Tuesday, April 7th. All right, well, welcome to Tap Talks. Um, we're gonna bring you some amazing arts professionals every day at 3 p.m. on Tuesdays and Thursdays, days that start with T. And they, they're gonna come here and talk about their past to where they are currently. Um, in creative careers and specifically for a teen audience though this is for everyone who wants to join in so if you're not a teen it's all right settle in get ready um, and for anyone who's joining in who's not familiar with tap it starts it starts as teen arts pass it's this amazing program that lets teens see live performances for only five dollars throughout the city we're a program of urban gateways which is an arts education organization that's been around forever uh, anyone 13 to 19 can get these tickets at performances of um, to any of our 27 arts partners all around the Chicago area. Of course, everything is kind of closed and there aren't performances to see in the city, so we wanted to do something else. So we wanted to keep the creativity flowing, engage our team somehow, so we are continuing these tap talks every single day that start with T. Hashtag Quarantine Arts Pass. Thanks for joining. All right, so today I am excited to introduce Barrett Simone Freund. All right, and we are going to bring them on now. Hey! Hi! <laughs> right now I'm going to read your bio as you are here. React to it as you like. <laughs> <laughs> Barrett, you're a dancer and dance administrator based in Chicago Ill. Your artistic home is the Jewel Hall Dancers and Center, where you are a first company apprentice, program manager, and instructor. Favorite dance movements credits include The Firebird, Masks and Myths, Unwinding, um, with Mandala South Asian Performing Arts Group, which I just saw recently online, amazing. Uh, Rite of Spring, The Fly Honey Show, Level, portals, music videos for Laura, Cortese, and the Dance Cards and Cupid Youth, and movement direction work for Grace, Grace or the Art of Climbing. And Les Innocence, you've done a lot. <laughs> Kudos to you. <laughs> <laughs> Great, so we have a lot of questions lined up today, but if anyone ever has a question, feel free to put it into the question box and we'll get to as many as we can. Welcome. So, Barrett, thank you for joining us today. Yeah, um, thanks for having me. Great. So to start us off, could you tell us a little bit about your current job? Yeah. Um, <laughs> there are many parts to my current job. Uh, I am a primarily a dancer. Um, I dance for the Joel Hall dancers most of the time, and they're a jazz dance company based in Chicago. Um, I also manage their studio uh, alongside one of my best friends, which is a huge blessing. Um, and we basically make sure that everything functions behind the scenes. Uh, we are also both part members of the company. And so we manage everything behind the scenes and then step out on stage. So our days are generally mostly like administrative work during the morning, um, making sure that everything runs smoothly at the studio and then later in the evenings get to do lots of rehearsals and classes and teaching and all sorts of good stuff and then making other uh, dance and creative things as we're able. Awesome. And then I also, when I do uh, other work, outside of Joel Hall Dancers and Center, it becomes a very fun juggling act of juggling, training with making sure other people's lives run with managing my own life, which is really, really always a learning adventure. Oh, absolutely. Um, here in Chicago, I know that so many arts professionals end up balancing a mix of arts administration and more of the creative side. Do you have any tips just off the cuff that you would give to people trying to balance a little bit of both? The more 
I have found that the more that I can uh, solidify a weekly like schedule, the better. So if I know that like these are generally my working hours, then I can arrange things around that. Um, also hugely, hugely blessed to be working as an arts administrator alongside people who understand the other side of the hustle. Um, so the more that you can get work that allows you that little bit of flexibility is like key <laughs> because like there's days when like there's a tech and I just can't work my regular hours that day. And so to have somebody who like other people um, on your team who get that and who know that you will also like help support them when they need you is hugely a blessing. Absolutely. Um, speaking of both of these sides, how did you find yourself in this line of work? That is a fun story. Um, <laughs> I grew up dancing. Uh, I started when I was three and was trained very, very intensely all throughout my like younger years when I was growing up. Um, I trained at a very intensive ballet uh, academy back in Seattle. I trained at Pacific Northwest Ballet School for 10 years. Um, had to leave because I had an extra bone in the back of my ankle that meant that I had like issues with Achilles tendonitis for three years. And after three years of like physical therapy and not being able to do the thing that I was there to do, they finally were like, Barrett, you, we want to help redirect you to something else, which was like absolutely crushing to hear at 16. But I got, they helped, really helped redirect me to a uh, more contemporary based school, which meant that I would be able to do everything that was being asked. And I didn't have to be like on point for four hours a day, which like my bones just couldn't do. Um, it was still an issue though. And I got surgery when I was 17 to take both these like extra bones out of the backs of my ankles. During that time, uh -huh, during that time of like rest and recovery, I, which was about nine months long, there was a bunch, like, a bunch of time where all I was able to do was lay in bed for, like, two weeks, and all I wanted to do was watch, like, Broadway bootlegs on YouTube, <laughs> and so I, like, was, remember sitting there and being kind of like, if this is what I want to do, and I know that I want to go into theater, then, like, what am I waiting for? Um, and so I applied to and went to school at North Park University in Chicago studying theater, uh, studying to get my BA. Um, after about two years with a focus in, like, lighting design and acting and a double major in creative writing, I remember having the same sort of like sitting on the couch and being like this isn't right anymore like I can't I can't do this anymore and so I left school uh, after my second year and during that time of like finishing my last semester up I was sitting in class and I was like I need to take a dance class today I need to do it and it needs to happen today. Um, and so I like pulled up my laptop that I was supposed to be taking notes on and was like looking up dance studios and Lou Conti was too far away. So I like looked for dance studios near me and Joel Hall Dancers and Center was the first one that popped up. And so I took a Horton class with William Gill that night. The next morning I shot them an email that was like, hey, I'm interested in work study. Um, got a response within 30 minutes, went in for an interview that afternoon and was hired onto the work study team and just didn't leave. <laughs> and that was, <laughs> that was about two years ago now. It'll be um, this April. Yeah. Wow. So it sounds like you just had this feeling and you went with it and you just dove in. You just mm -hmm. jumped off and took a chance and then it worked. Right. I really, yeah, it was wild, too, because at the time that I decided that, like, I needed to leave school, I, like, had no plan. 
I had no plan. I felt like I was throwing myself into the void, but like that there could be something on the other side of the void that was made me feel better than where I was. Um, and that's what we, that's what happened. Wow. Thank you for giving us that background. Um, for those who are just joining, this is Tab Talks, where we talk with professionals in the arts and their path to getting to where they are now. Um, and this is Barrett. At so I kind of want to go back in time a little bit um, before we get too far into the future, into the present. Can you tell me what your first arts-related memory was? Do you think that influenced you? The first thing that comes to mind is something that, like, I genuinely am not sure if it's real or a dream. <laughs> But I remember being very, very young, um, must have been like a toddler and being at a show. I have this very specific image of, it must have been a recital of like a bunch of small like dancers in bright pink tutus, um, <laughs> like being on stage and kind of like standing outside in the hallway and like watching them. I think, like, waiting for some sort of, for, like, my group to go. Um, that is the earliest memory I have. It's fuzzy and doesn't mean much. <laughs> the earliest clear memory is probably going to see performances at Pacific Northwest Ballet and, like, getting dressed up. And I would take, like, my American Girl doll with me. Um, or I had this purse when I was young that was like a unicorn and you like unzipped its back and then you put things in the unicorn. And that was, I was stunned with that to ballet performances when I was younger. <laughs> That's wonderful. Um, before this call, I learned that you also had the experience of going out as a teen over in Seattle with our good friends, Teen Ticks. How was that? What? Um, tell me about your experience going out as a teen and seeing things for only five dollars. It was wild and I remember like when I moved away for school I was like oh my gosh I'm gonna miss teen ticks <laughs> because we like my friends and I who were studying at PNB or at the other school I studied at which was Spectrum Dance Theater in Seattle um, we would get to go see like shows at the opera house and like we they were so like excited to have teenagers who were like really gung-ho about being there and like we would always dress up and show out because you have to like that was the expectation and we like the people at the box office would be so excited to see us that like I remember sitting in boxes I remember sitting in seats that are normally like hundred fifty two hundred dollars and just be like yeah what you know about it like you know just another day it was really like phenomenal the amount of things that I got to see as a young like as I really am so thankful that I like can't even formulate words <laughs> that's completely fair I hear amazing stories all the time of being able to go out and see things and experience things that maybe it wouldn't be as easy to go and see if the program didn't exist. So that's great. Mm -hmm. I love that you did that before you moved here. Um, so we're gonna, we're gonna move a little bit closer to the present now. Um, what would you attribute your success to in your career? That's a hard question. Um, I feel so thankful to have ended up in Chicago, to have started like a career in Chicago. Um, the story of how I ended up here is a similar like gut instinct story that starts with the snow cone, but like we can talk about that later. Uh, <laughs> but I like even when I was in school, I was working um, in the theater scene mostly as a like backstage hand as an assistant stage manager as like a uh, lighting um, master electrician and like doing that sort of work uh, and I like 
I would ask for things and get told yes. Like one of the first theater companies that I worked with regularly was the House Theater of Chicago. Um, and I got an internship with them when I, like my first summer in the city after my freshman year of college. And I remember having like so many, it was down at the U Chicago Logan Center for the Arts. And so you would like carpool with people down there and like sitting in cars with like people who are who you want to be is such a, was such a huge blessing. And I remember getting told over and over and over again that like, if you want something, just ask for it. If you want to do something, just ask. And it was like, that voice that I heard replaying in my head when I like sent the email to the info at Joel Hall asking about like work study. Um, and it was that voice that I like heard in my head when I later like continued, wanted to continue that relationship and like would be like, hey, can I increase my hours? Hey, can I change? Like, blah, 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 and be like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Or I started working with Mandala South Asian Dance Arts because I like had a friend who was working with them and I was like, hey, do they need, like I see that they're working on this huge thing, do they need any more dancers? And she was like, yeah, actually they were. And it was through like that, that repeated like exchange that I really started to see like opportunities start to snowball um, when I was just starting out. And even today, like, if you want something, just ask. The answer will probably be yes. And people want to help people out, especially in Chicago. Mm -hmm. Like, the city is so truly, truly, like, built off, especially the arts community, is built off of, like, people having each other's backs and wanting to help each other up. And it's really, like, phenomenal and supportive in that way. Wow. You're so inspiring. <laughs> So you're here and everything has been wonderful, but have you experienced any challenges in the last two years? This is a question that we actually got um, from the friends of the Cathedral Elementary um, a few weeks ago. And we just, is there any challenge that you've had to overcome and what did you do in the last two years? <laughs> <laughs> oh, there are many. <laughs> To give you all the hard questions at once. Yeah. Um, I'd say for me, the biggest like challenge that I like know that I will deal with for the rest of my career is that um, I like I am non-binary. So I use they, them pronouns, um, live somewhere in the middle of the gender spectrum, which is very tricky as a dance artist because everything is based off of generalization. Like the way you're viewed all day, every day for your body, for like the shapes that it can make, for the feelings that live within it, for the communication that you can do with your body. Um, and like to be, I am often put into the camp of like the more female like looking bodies because that's how I look like that is how I look um and it is very difficult to feel often like mm -hmm. you're not being seen for who you are but you're being seen for what you look like which is like true of all performing artists to some extent. Um, and I am very thankful and blessed to like live in an environment at Joel Hall Dancers and Center where there is like, I, I like, I feel seen there. Um, I don't think it's an accident that I ended up there. I like, that's the only dance environment that I have been in since coming out where like everybody uses my pronouns and I am incredibly, incredibly thankful for that. Um, that trying to reconcile the like, this is what I look like. 
this is what the rest of the world sees with like the truth of who you are as a person is very challenging. It's very challenging. Uh, what the only found way that I have found to help like reconcile that within myself because really it doesn't matter what like other people say or think as long as I feel like I know who I am at the end of the day. Um, aside from I embroider my dance wear with pronouns, <laughs> that helps because then people are forced to look at them all day. Um, <laughs> but really like as long as I know who I am, myself as a human versus myself as like a performing artist to some extent are two different people. The version of myself that I want like somebody to see if they're seeing me in a show or if they're looking to hire me is different than the version of myself than that like everybody gets to see on a like day-to-day -day basis. Um, and to be able to hold those two contrasting things and to feel like I have the freedom to decide what I want to project at any given time, as long as I know who I am, then like whatever anybody else sees, who cares? It's a very convoluted like answer to that question, and I hope it was clear. <laughs> I think so. That's incredible. I'm so glad I asked. And um, are there any any other takeaways that you would like to share with the arts community or with teens who are uh, figuring out what they're doing um, in the arts or in their world and like how, I don't know, how to make things easier or any, any things that you would say to them to just, is there something that they should think about when they wake up in the morning or, you know? Trust that your voice matters trust that you have like in whatever it is you choose to create what you have to say is important that's it you wouldn't be given a voice if you weren't supposed to use it whatever that voice is i love that thank you okay so we're gonna take a breath for a second um because that was amazing anyone who's joining us this is tap talks we're talking about the arts and what it means to be in them. Um, and I'm going to break it up a little bit with, a, with something a little bit lighter. <laughs> uh, I'm going to give you a series of things and you have to pick one. Okay. Okay. Netflix or Hulu? Netflix. Okay. Coffee or tea? Coffee. Tortilla chips or potato chips? Tortilla. Yes. Ability to <laughs> or to read minds. Sorry, what was the first one? Ability to fly or to read minds. Read minds. Okay. Summer or winter? Summer. In Chicago, summer. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Seriously. Cake or pie? Pie. Comedy or drama? Depends on the day. Oh, man. Um, <laughs> probably dramas more often. Indoors or outdoors? Outdoors. Outdoors. Please let me out. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good day to be outside. It's yeah. not good to be outside. Go outside. Safety. I was considering, like, doing this from outside, and then I was like, there's no Wi-Fi out there. <laughs> If only. All right. So bring it back. Um, tell us about a project that you've really enjoyed. Um, put more mm -hmm. out in the world. Ooh, recently, it's not necessarily like a project project, but I've been playing like choreography tags with um, a couple of my dance friends going like back and forth on Instagram, which is very, very fun. Uh, there's one that is 
like me and one of my friends who's a tapper for a Chicago Tap Theater um, that is like, I'll do a couple like phrases of music and then he does a couple phrases of like a song by Herbie Hancock. Um, I truly like am so thankful that we have so many like digital ways to connect <laughs> right now because those are like those little back and forth things are like I created a dance video with a friend of mine last week that's like a bunch of clips from the two of us like working off of a prompt uh, together in our like different living situations and then like chopped up and put together and like the ability to do that and to create art with other people right now is like soul filling. Oh, that sounds like fun. So is that what fills your time at home these days? Is there anything else that you like gets you in the zone? Right now, I I am blessed to like be working um, in order to keep Joel Hall Dancers and Center running. We have classes online on Zoom most days per week. <laughs> um, that's like really helped me stay grounded is to have something to do for like people who need me to do the thing in order to like keep us all moving forward. Um, other than that, I, like, yeah, spend a lot of time moving at home, taking other people's dance classes, uh, other than Joel Hall Dancers and Center, Lucky Plush has a really, like, great series right now, um, and you can hang out with our artistic director, Jacqueline Sinclair, Fridays, she teaches floor bar, um, through them, it's, like, Lucky Plush and U Chicago, and there's, like, people from all over the city teaching different classes, and it's a really, like, great opportunity for me, who generally stays, like, within my little circle, um, I'm really thankful to, like, get to hang out with people who I don't normally get to hang out with, or for it to feel, like, normal to talk to friends who I haven't talked to in a long time, because generally I don't feel like I have the time, but now I can, like, call them up and we can talk for two hours, which is like absolutely bonkers. Very exciting. Very. It's definitely a silver lining of all of this is that things are a little bit different, but there's a way to make the things that are different just really work. Just mm -hmm. like a to the day. Right. All right. So as a teen, you were dancing. You started dancing um, over in Seattle early on, but what were you like as a teen? <laughs> um, I was very, very serious. I, uh, in addition to my time, like I was ballet, ballet, ballet in the evenings. And then during the day I attended the Nikola Tesla science, technology, engineering, and mathematics high school. Um, <laughs> <laughs> like a lot of structure uh very like I remember it like my thing was wearing like blazers with like t-shirts underneath um I, I also wore like the like easiest way to tell you about what I was was to tell you about my style that like I also wore a lot of like pastels and froofy things and like I have a sweatshirt that I could pull out of my closet right now that is one of the like final remnants of that that's like a Squidward sweatshirt um that's pretty great it was a lot of like I kind of flounced around in like ballet plat flats like a little fairy princess a little bit and truly just leaned all the way into that uh it was as a way to compensate for how, like, I am going to do this thing. And if you're going to try to stop me, like, good luck. Um, very headstrong. Nobody could tell me anything. Like, I definitely got myself in trouble for, like, Barry, you were supposed to be home three hours ago, that kind of stuff. Like, I, we both knew I wasn't going to be home three hours ago. What do you mean? What do you mean? Uh... <laughs> And truly just like I remember too that I decided that I didn't want to do a full day at school I was done I didn't want to do it so I like went to it was a very small school so I like remember walking into the principal's office and being like 
hi, I don't want to be here as much. How do we, how do we reconcile that? Like very, very blunt. And she was like, do you want to rephrase that? And I was like, yeah, I think so. <laughs> Just like a little bit self-aware, but not all the way at all. Better now for the most part. But I was very lucky, like lucky to have adults in my life who were able to guide me and be like, so this is how this is going to go. This is what like we need you to complete. What can you do? And I was like, great, I can do that and then make this other thing work for me and very much kind of like taking the different pieces of my life, even when I was younger and like making them fit the way that I wanted to. Um, I grew up in so much structure that I learned how to pick it apart um, and learned how to like figure out what things I needed to maintain on my own and what things I could throw away. <laughs> And so that was, like, that's one of the big things that I still tell the kids that I teach when they're like, why do I have to do this thing? And I'm like, well, you need to learn the rules so you can learn how to break them without anybody knowing that you're breaking them. <laughs> Which is true. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, having a structure and then being able to decide where within that structure you can sort of change things around to fit more with who you are and what you need and want than existence, right? Mm hmm It's amazing. Um, when you were a teen, what did you, ex what did you want to do when you grew up? Are you where you thought you'd be? Oh, no, I, where I am is much better than where I thought I would be, like, straight up. Um, I wanted to be an astronaut. <laughs> From the time that I was about four up until uh, my freshman year of high school, and I like did all the I did all the things. I checked all the boxes. I was at space camp every summer when I wasn't like at dance camps and intensives and all of those things. Um, and I remember sitting in my like freshman year of high school. It is my honors physics course. This is step one. Here we go. And I remember sitting in that class and just like watching the clock because it was my last class of the day. And after I was gone from there, I would get to go to dance. And I was kind of like, well, that feels indicative of something. <laughs> like maybe, maybe we're not where we're supposed to be, or maybe we're not headed where we're supposed to be going. Um, and from then it was all, I remember like coming home one day and being like, I'm going to be a professional dancer. And both of my parents who were engineers at Boeing uh, were like, you're going to do what? <laughs> That's not a real job. <laughs> I don't think so. Um, and so then I like did it anyways. Um, <laughs> so it could not be stopped. And ended up like all ballet, all day, every day, until I was forced, uh, asked, redirected from that path because, like, my ankles just straight up couldn't handle it. My, like, I had an extra bone. What can you do? Um, from there, I thought that, like, I was still going to go to a conservatory and end up, like, in some... I don't know where I thought I would end up. I remember... Somebody asking me, like, my senior year of high school what my, like, five-year plan was. And I was like, my plan is not to have a plan and to end up where I'm supposed to, which was not an answer that a lot of adults were very fond of, but it was what I had. Um, and now I remember being, like, very intrigued by musical theater and very intrigued by, like, jazz dance and by the storytelling aspect of dance, which was my favorite thing about ballet was, like, storytelling ballets. So I wanted there to be a story, and I wanted to know what was going on, and the acting was, like, far more, like, the most interesting to me. And I, like, now dance for a jazz company, which is just, like, objectively very cool. <laughs> I'm kind of like hoping that they don't figure out like what a dork internal Barrett is. I'm like, it's fine. They don't need to know. Um, <laughs> and like able to make arts opportunities for other people, 
which is such a huge like blessing and so exciting to be able to do um so like early in my career i'm really like i i i think that my younger version of myself would be excited about where i am now i think so i hope so because it's like there's nothing i can do about it if if they're not <laughs> no <laughs> Sorry. We're, we're coming up on time, but we do have a few more questions. And anyone who's watching, if you have a question that you want to ask Barrett, submit it now, forever hold your peace uh, <laughs> for today's program. Um, Barrett, what piece of advice would you give to your teenage self? My teenage self was very hard on themselves. Um, I think partially because I was in such like high achieving environments growing up, it was really hard for me to separate like my worth as a person from like external like boxes checked or grades gotten or like uh, having the ability to like execute a dance step to a level that I was happy with. Um, I would want to tell my younger self that like, it, like you're fine. <laughs> you're just where you, you're exactly where you need to be, and to let them know that like their worth as a person is not determined by any of those factors, but that it's like something within, and that anything that they achieve outside of that is just like extra icing on the cake. Or like an extra like outside um, manifestation of that internal worth that like and if something doesn't work out it's not because they're like not any less worthy of any of the things that they think that they can do or that they think that they are that they know that they can do or that they know that they are um, but that it isn't something that's meant for them and that there's something better on the way. That's great. Is there anything else that you'd like to share with teens who maybe want to get into a similar career as you? Work like you've already got it. Like, Anytime you step into a room or into, if you're a dancer, into a studio or into a rehearsal room, do the work like it's already perfect and like you already know it's perfect. You'll get corrected. That's what we do. But to approach it like you've already got it means that you're not working against yourself. Oh, wise words. Wow. You've, you've shared so many wonderful things with us today, and I want to thank you for being on Tap Talks with us to give us your wisdom and a little bit of insight into what it means to be there. Um, thank, thank you so much for having me. Uh, well, it is now time. We're shutting down. Um, we're going to be posting this to our YouTube channel, so keep a lookout for that. We'll announce it here on IG when it goes live. Um, and so this Thursday, we'll be chatting with Rachel Silvert. She's an actor, she's a storyteller, a singer, and all an overall wonderful human being. So be sure to check us out on Thursday. Follow Teen Arts Pass if you aren't already. And we'll see you then. Thank you so much for joining us. And Thank you for having me. Great. And have a wonderful Thursday, Tuesday. Yeah. It's a sunny day. It's a wonderful it's day. Fun. Time isn't real anymore. It's all right. <laughs> Bye, everyone. Bye.